Today, I wanted to talk about Ultimatum. Over the last couple of days, I've been doing a nice mix of things. I've been doing Ultimatum and Sanctum. But today, I want to focus on Ultimatum. Ultimatum has been absolutely, positively just out of this world. It has been just leagues and leagues of leagues of fun. It has produced tons of currency. You get really cool uniques. You get things to dust. You pretty much gives you everything that you want. And it's really simple and straightforward and down to earth to run. You'll notice looking at my ultimatum top, I have a bunch of inscribed ultimatums. I have a ton of tainted catalyst and I have pretty much just a bunch of everything that ultimatum has to offer. Now, ultimatum in itself, the tree is extremely straightforward. We just pretty much take all of the ultimatum nodes we take a little bit of beyond because we kill a lot of mobs we get a lot of beyond and we take pretty much just a bunch of pack size for altars i personally like running blue altars some people like running red altars and the altars that you take are pretty much up to you to break it down into a bit more detail this wheel right here is just going to give you a ton of chance for ultimatum the wheel over here is going to give you ultimatum rewards in your map starting tier higher if possible ultimatums and rewards in your map duplicate this 25 percenter hits all of the time and feels absolutely positively fantastic when it happens and you absolutely without a doubt want this you can also get this where ultimatum encounters in your mask have three percent reduced radius each round which is like whatever but ultimatum encounters and rewards are those you've completed an additional round this is really important because instead of wave one it would be like wave two and wave two would be three and three would be four so yeah your your circle goes a little smaller but having your rewards count around higher is really 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 impactful as far as this wheel here we're not taking this ultimatum monsters in your map apply rune we the we're good we're fine we never want that that sounds terrible no thank you i have chosen to not protect the altar protect the altar is fine it's okay mobs run to you it's not really bad i have personally opted for killing waves of enemies and I have personally opted for survive. I could should probably actually like take out survive and put them here, but you know, it's fine. The one that I did not opt in for was stone circles. I really don't like stone circles. Uh, they take a little bit longer. They're kind of annoying. You can die to rune inside of stone circles. I died earlier to rune in stone circles. Not my favorite cup of tea. This is just the beyond wheel and this is just the beyond wheel. Same thing with this. This is beyond to get you all the beyond. And this wheel up here gives you more opportunity for div cards. This ultimatum wheel here gives you more opportunity for div cards, unique items and currency. Depending on which one you want more of should be the one that you spec into. I want them all. So I kind of did them all. And this one just gives you more opportunity for inscribed ultimatums. Inscribed ultimatums in themselves are really good. And we'll talk about those in a second. And then the last wheel here gives you a full stack of a random catalyst and the opportunity to fight the boss. The boss for ultimatum, if your build can handle it and can kill it, I think is really good and well worth taking. The cast when sun build can do it. You just vow breach the boss. You cast your curse. It dies. Any DPS build can just insta blow up the boss. He's not really too hard, but I mean, if you can do it, it's absolutely worth doing. And like I said, the rest of the points just go into map effect modifiers, and that's pretty much as straightforward as the Atlas gets. Now, when we kill the boss, we get a random stack of catalysts. This is how I have all these catalysts, and some of the catalysts at the time of recording are pretty expensive. These right now are about 48, 49, 50 to a divine. These are roughly 160 to a divine. These are 17 to a divine. These are 155. These are 191. These are 10 to a divine, and now I'm rate limited. The reason why it's important to note this is if I take a stack of catalysts and I bring it to the hoarder crafting station and I type catalyst, depending on the price of life force, I can swap catalyst to other really good ones and have the opportunity to roll them into non, non bad ones. And you know, a couple of clicks here and there, you might end up making out really well if you hit some of the good ones. So, I mean, like, that was pretty good, man. As far as rerolling catalysts, you probably want to, like, double and triple and quadruple check the prices of yellow. I think yellow right now is not too bad and is well worth buying the yellow to do it or self-farming the yellow with a second tree. But it's 7,000 to a divine, and you have the opportunity to, like, roll into... Where's my ultimatum tab? Roll into, like, fertile catalysts at 17 or prismatics. And I think even unstables are expensive, but I'm locked out right now. I can't look. 
I think it's well worth it. That's on, you know, that's something. Catalyst scale in the ultimatum based upon how hard your map is. So if you want to farm Catalyst, you need to scale your map really hard. Eight mod maps, six mod, you know, bring them to the moon, you'll get more Catalyst. That's how you farm Catalyst. If you're not too excited about Catalyst and you don't want to farm Catalyst and you want to do specifically inscribed ultimatums, inscribed ultimatums are really cool. They have a line of text on them called more monster life. If you're looking at this one, it's the bottom line there. Inscribed ultimatums, when they have more monster life, determines the type of reward. So there's 30%, there's 70%. I don't think I have any higher ones. I have a bunch of 70s. There's a 120 right here. Uh, I don't think I have a 200. I have another 120 right here. Oh, I have another 120 right here. Nice. Oh my God, I have another 120 right there. These are 70s. This is 30. So it goes 30, 70, 120, 200. So yeah, it's it's zero, no monster life, 30% monster life, 70% monster life, 120 monster life, and then 200% more monster life. The no monster life ones here, these can give you one divine. So you go in, you do the ultimatum, you get one divine. This one can give you uh, four divines. I think this one is eight divines, and then this one's a lot more. The reason why it's really impactful to know these is that the 120 percenters can be five to one to get another 120 percenter. So if you don't like any of the rewards that are on these, for example, you would just five to one them. So uh, to do an example, if I take this one with call the first one, this one with chaos orbs, this one for the oath, this one orbs, I'm not making this one the union and I go to Lily and I five to one them, I'll get a new inscribed ultimatum that has the opportunity to give me divines. Same thing where if I just take more monster life and I just grab this 30 percenter, this 30 percenter, this 30 percenter, this 30 percenter, and this 30 percenter, let's just take some 70s too. All right. Do we have five 70s? Two, three, four. I do have five 70s. All right. This is the hunger, the wind, the hunger, the unchained, and exalted orbs. Okay. So let's take these. Let's go here. Sell these. And then divine vanity cards. And orbs of an element unlucky but that's the whole idea is you can actually farm a lot of inscribed ultimatums now there's two trains of thoughts there's i'm going to farm catalyst and i'm going to juice my maps or and there's i'm going to farm inscribed ultimatums and i'm going to go that route and i'm going to run white maps either option you take is really 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 good or you could do a mix like i'm doing where i'm getting my catalyst from the boss only at the end and i'm hunting inscribed ultimatums which comes down to just how you're going to juice your maps in terms of scarabs. Right now, the best way to run ultimatum, in my opinion, is to have a 100% chance for ultimatum on your atlas tree, which is what we're doing. And then we're going to be using these two ultimatum scarabs of bribings. These are doing the same thing that the atlas nodes are doing, where they're kicking your rewards up around. So this counts as though we start with one of them on wave three, and then this one would start us on more wave five. These scarabs at the time of recording are relatively cheap. They're about 50 to a divine. Absolutely positively worth it. You skip a bunch of rounds of ultimatums. Your rewards are a lot nicer and you absolutely 100% should be running both of these. The rest of the scarabs are where it gets a little optional. If you want to farm Catalyst, then you don't want this one. If you want to farm inscribed ultimatums, then you want this one. This one says all of the catalyst options become inscribed ultimatums. I really personally like running this. These are about 80 to a divine. I like this a lot because I like inscribed ultimatums. You get a lot of really, really, really good things from inscribed ultimatums. I'm a huge fan of inscribed ultimatums. But like I said, if you want to farm catalyst, you wouldn't use this one. I also use this one because I get inscribed ultimatums inside my ultimatum. And when I kill the boss, it gives me a stack of catalyst. So I get the best of both worlds with this. And since I want to kill the boss, and since I'm aiming for the boss, I've been buying the ultimatum scarab of dueling. This one is a little pricey. It's about six to seven to a divine, but you are getting a stack of tainted catalyst plus a stack of something else. So, I mean, like you make up your money from that plus everything else, and you have the opportunity for hate forge and all of the ultimatum uniques. You can either corrupt the helmet and try to use it for really cool stuff, or you can dust all the gear, or maybe you get lucky and you get hate forge and it just pays for everything forever. I don't see a world where like you just skip the boss like it just makes sense to me in my world to always kill the ultimatum boss the only scarab that is really on the fence that i don't know if it's worth running or not 
is the Catalyst Scarab. This one is 1.2 divines per attempt, but it turns all of your rewards into catalysts. A lot of the catalysts are really expensive. This is also really expensive. I imagine this is really expensive because catalysts in some cases are really expensive and you know, converting the catalyst with harvest is really good. I personally have not started running this yet. I, I don't know if it's good or not. I would proceed with caution. The old tech would be to run these two together so that all of your rewards are catalysts and then all of them become inscribed ultimatums. This last league when I did this was insane profit. If you do it like this, I think it's 100% worth it. I think comparing these two together is really, really, really good. I don't know if I personally want to take the jump into spending multiple divine a map, but I don't think it's bad. I think it's really good. Overall, though, I think running ultimatum with the basic of setups is relatively fine and you shouldn't have that much of an issue. We're just going to grab a map here and I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So we're going to put these four scarabs in. I'm going to put a sack fragment for more quantity on the map. I'm going to put my map in. I'm going to run my city square and I'm just going to go run my map. These maps are relatively easy, relatively straightforward. We come into the map. If you want to get some altars, get some altars. Great. If you want to kill the boss, I think you should kill the boss. Great. It's also a really good source of gold farming. You come in really quick. You kill everything along the route. You go straight to the middle. You pop the boss really quick. You get your not mage blood belt that you think is a mage blood that you're really excited for. You pick up your cards and you grab your ore and move on. Now you're going to ask me, why am I doing city square? Why city square? What maps are really good for this? The map that you want to do is literally your choice of preference. A lot of people like Jungle Valley. A lot of people like City Square. Currently on my Atlas, I have been jumping back and forth. I have Defiled Cathedral on Jungle Valley for Apothecary. And I have Residence on City Square for Nimis. So I just kind of like jump back and forth between the two. The only things that I really do in the map, I kill the map boss of the chance for good maps. I blitz around. I look for altars if they're there, whatever. If not, I'd like to get the Divine Altar. And I just kind of kill my ore because I, you know, I'm still doing town stuff. I want the ore for town stuff. And oh, this guy's actually a little beefy, bro. You a little beefy there. Oh, Slayer Calling Strike, bro. Can't be beat. Slayer Calling Strike too strong. And then there we go. There's the ultimatum. I'm not going to worry about finishing up the map, but, you know, we'll go from here. So when we get to our ultimatum, you're going to see a lot of really cool things. You're going to see like double corrupted uniques, double corrupted rares you're going to see just pretty much a lot of really cool random things. The thing with Ultimatum is you're, you need a build that can survive a lot of the mods. The mods get a little tricky. They get a little difficult. They can be a little hard. And you'll have to gauge based upon what you're playing, how hard of a difficulty the map can be with the mods. If we're not hunting Catalyst and we're only hunting Inscribed Ultimatums, like I mentioned, you could do the maps white doing the maps white makes it so that you only need to be able to survive these skulls that are shooting at you and you don't have to worry too too much about the mobs and you can just run the mobs over doing the maps rare eight modded corrupted deli doll nine yards the mobs are definitely going to become a little bit harder you're going to need a build that can kill the mobs and be able to walk through it that's why i mentioned the castle and stun chieftain it's really 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 good at just like afking in these maps or just something with like really high dps that can just like blow them all up Overall, though, Ultimatum itself isn't very hard. Things to know about Ultimatum that most people might not know are relatively important. If you step outside of this circle, you will get a warning to return to the ring. If you are outside of the circle long enough, the Ultimatum will end and you will be able to collect the rewards up until the point where you're at. So if it ever gets too hard and you don't want to lose your rewards, step outside of the ring and the Ultimatum and you'll get your rewards. If you die inside of the ultimatum or while the ultimatum is on, you will lose all of your rewards. Keep that in mind. Dying in the ultimatum is very bad. You do not want to die. Do your best to not die. Dying will lose you all of your rewards. I can't stress it enough. If it gets too hard, literally leave. If you get a good reward you want to keep, literally leave. You can double and triple check all of your rewards. There's a button here right there that says preview rewards. You can click on preview rewards. You can see what rewards you've gotten. You can easily tell what rewards have doubled and you can just literally hit rewards and straight leave or you could do like me and keep going. So we're just going to do this last round really quick. We're going to blow it up easy peasy. No problems. We're not going to randomly die to some insane stuff. Right, right, right. 
We're just surviving. We're surviving. We're feeling good about ourselves. We're surviving. And then the last round here, we're just going to take whatever. It doesn't really matter. We're going to accept. We're going to go straight to the boss fight. And this boss fight, oh my God, the arena is massive. And then we're just going to... That's one of the coolest animations in the game. And I don't know why more boss fights don't do that. I really wish more boss fights did that. And then we're just going to kill him really quick. That's it. That's ultimatum in a nutshell. You'll see he's going to die. He's going to bleed out. He's going to respawn for the next time. And then he's going to give us our loot. That's it. It's as simple as that. Here comes all of our loot. We feel really good about ourselves. We get some gold. We get 24 catalysts. We get these 24 catalysts because we've rolled our maps. Very, very, very important to note that if we didn't roll our map and we didn't have the map as hard as we did, we never would have got as many catalysts as we did. And then you'll see we didn't get a headhunter. And then there's a Val Scepter here. We'll pick that up. This is the unique that we get from this guy. And then we just kind of, you know, go bring this to the little duster guy. Other notable uniques that come out of him, you get the Scepter for the Val Pact life thing. That thing's like 20C, very good, very strong. And then there's a Val mask that you can get. You can get this thing. This thing's really interesting. It has a line of text on it when you don't brick them that says can be altered while corrupted. Essentially, these masks, if they're still corrupted with that line of text, they're like 100C or something like that. But if they if they're if they have the line of text, you can literally Valorb them and they get a bunch of really random unique helmet modifiers and they can pretty much turn into any helmet, which is really, really, really cool. So like this one, for example, this one with nearby enemies are blinded. This used to be this helmet. I valed it. It got nearby enemies are blinded and it turned into this. And then I have another one. I found a heat shiver where I ended up getting area of effect. So you see how this one has area of effect. I vowed this one and it turned into heat shiver with area of effect. There's a lot of really cool mods that you can get on those helmets that you should really like consider rolling those helmets. You can get area of effect. You can get mana reservation. You can get all kinds of really cool things. But overall, ultimatum in itself, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, pretty easy. You see, we didn't even finish that map. We got about 10,000 gold. We go over here, we dump it on in and we just kind of go about our business. But yeah, that's really it. Ultimatum in itself, very simple, very cheap to run. The maps are, I don't know, like six maps to a divine. So divines are like, I don't know what, like 180, right? So it's just like 180 divided by six is uh, like 30 C. So it costs you like 40 or 50 C a map. And you just made that back. We got 14, where are these? We got 14 of these. And if we like pay, price them in chaos, they're like four chaos each. So like just killing the boss paid for the map plus everything else that we got. Seems pretty good. You know, we're in and out. This video is like 20 minutes long. We were in the map for, we were in the map for four minutes and 47 seconds. So that's it. That's ultimatum in a nutshell. If you have questions about the ultimatum, you want a deeper dive into ultimatum, you want to talk more, you want me to even experiment with the, uh, the really expensive scarab, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to chat more about ultimatum. Or if you have questions about the build that I am playing or anything else going on, Feel free to leave a comment. You can pull my profile. You can come stop by the Twitch stream. You can come to the Discord. I encourage you guys to do all the things. But for now, friends, I'm going to give this video to you guys. And if you do Ultimatum and you have good luck with it, let me know. I want to hear how Ultimatum went for you. But for now, friends, I'll see you all in the next one.